Good morning, YouTube family. How in the heck are you guys? I have missed you. I have not been going out diving for a few reasons. We'll get into that. Um, what is going on with my hair over here? I don't know. So it is, what day is today? Today is Friday. I am on my way to work. I have not vlogged since my live because A, it's been raining every day. I don't know if you can tell, but it poured this morning. And every night around like six o'clock, it starts raining and it pours all night. So I can't go out diving. Hubby is finally off this weekend. So earlier this week, I couldn't really go during the day because I had the girls. Um, I'm trying really not to take them out as much as possible and keep them home. Um, I did need to go to the store yesterday. I told hubby, look, I am broke. I have no money, zero dollars. And um, I need to go and get us stocked up on some things before it's all completely sold out. So I was able to get almost everything I needed. I cannot find yeast anywhere. I mean, I have like a couple packets of it, but I can't find it anywhere. I've tried Amazon. I've tried Walmart online. I've tried all targets around me. I've tried the little like shop and save grocery stores. I've tried everywhere. And my little cousin actually works at Target and she stocked the yeast, flour and sugar Wednesday night. And Thursday morning at 10 a.m. I went out to Target and it was all gone except for a 10 pound and a five pound bag of sugar and or a 10 pound and a five pound bag of flour and two um, small bags of sugar so that's a problem I'm having um, because I figure you know you can make bread super cheap which is what we're gonna be doing today um, before I get into all that I'm gonna tell you what exactly I'm doing right now so today is Friday I'm on my way to my work to the bar to pick up my paycheck <laughs> like $30 paycheck it's not much when you make four dollars an hour I mean I make all my money in tips so yeah this is not fun I did file for unemployment I don't know if I'll get it because I do make some money from YouTube and they may not give me anything but to be completely honest with you guys I only make about four to five hundred dollars a month from YouTube so I'm not getting much um, thankfully hubby is still working the governor last night said that all non life sustaining businesses in Pennsylvania need to close by 8 p.m. thank goodness my husband works at the steel mill and that is life sustaining so he is thank goodness still working because if both of us were not working this would not be easy also our cars are paid off our home is paid off thank goodness for all that and we have a good amount in our savings but we're saving that for a house I mean if God forbid we need it to survive of course we would dip into that but um, I know a lot of you guys aren't working because if a lot of you guys work in the restaurant industry I mean pretty much the only people that are working are People that work in grocery stores, pharmacies, doctor's offices, hospitals, nurses, things like that. Um, all the fast food restaurants, the drive throughs are open. Sit-down restaurants are not. Uh, I think they're open to carry out only. Our bar tried that and it didn't go well, so they're not doing it. Um, but this is, this is not fun, as I'm sure it's not fun for you guys. This is a hard time right now in everybody's life, and it's just gonna get harder, sadly. Um, the only thing I can hope is that this literally does not last months, because I don't, I can't. I can't, I can't go months without having any money. Not fun, as I'm sure you guys can't either. This just is, this is hard. I. I hope I can get unemployment, but then again, I only worked part-time at that bar, but that was my main source of income. I only had to work part-time because I made great money, and I don't even know if that bar will be open when all this is done because I don't know if he can withstand being closed 
for however long we have to be closed for. So this is just horrible and it's raining again. Um, so here's what we're doing today. I obviously am not going dumpster diving because it's raining. Um, I'm hoping to get back out and I'm going to start checking the pharmacy dumpsters, the grocery store dumpsters, whatever I can check. I'm checking to see if I can rescue anything that doesn't need to be thrown away that we could use at this time. It's starting to freak me out because people cannot go weeks. I mean, I can't go days without working, let alone weeks. And God forbid months. And I know you guys can't either. So I don't know what we're all going to do. I really don't. The president's saying about sending out a, a simulation check or whatever it's called. Stimulus check. Stimulation. Stimulus check. Um, what's a thousand dollars going to do? That doesn't even pay people's bills. You know what I mean? Like that's You'll be lucky to put food on your table for that much if you have a large family. So this is just not fun times whatsoever. So I'm going to try and pump out as many videos as I can. Um, just A, to keep my mind busy and B, to try and circulate some income for myself. Um, my money for last month is already like set so I we get paid a month behind so I'm getting paid for February this month and in February I only made like $500 so I'm not getting much but I'm gonna try and build up my channel as much as I can I'm gonna try and do more cooking I'm gonna do cleaning I'm gonna do whatever the heck I can do to generate some income for myself at least from YouTube because if I don't get unemployment that I am screwed. I mean, yes, my husband works, but I don't like to not contribute to our home. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, he knows it's not like he's going to be mad at me if I can, but you know, I have doctor's appointments. I have medications that I need that are expensive that this just is not fun, but so I'm going to go and get my small minuscule paycheck from work, cash that just so I have some money in my pocket. I have a lot of items that I found in the dumpsters that can sustain me for a little while still, which is what we're going to be doing today. When I get home, I am going to be making you guys some Dutch oven bread because I just got that Dutch oven out of the Aldi dumpster and I have never made Dutch oven bread, so we're gonna learn together. Flour, I've gotten out of the Aldi's dumpster, I think it was like a month or two ago. Um, so I'm just gonna use up what I have and try and make some cheap recipes for you guys and show you that you can make things on a budget because right now is when we ultimately need to be on a very tight budget and making dinner and lunches and breakfast and snacks for our kids. I mean, they're home 24 hours a day, as are you guys. So all three meals need to be eaten at home. Snacks need to be eaten at home. So I'm gonna try my best to make do with what we have and make everything that we have last as long as possible. So bear with me, guys. I will be throwing in dumpster diving videos, but I cannot go out diving in this pouring rain. Um, hopefully I can get out tonight. I'll see if it stops raining. So I'll see you guys when I get back home and we are gonna make some Dutch oven bread. Now I found a few different recipes. Um, the one I found was just using water and the other one I found uses water and some milk. And I was like, mm, I think I'm gonna go with the milk one just to see how that goes first. The website is sandraseasycooking.com. That is where I got this recipe. And it is her Dutch oven bread. And she says, I call it the best because it is so easy yet very delicious. So, and we have step by step. Thank goodness I got ink and printer paper, right? <laughs> now I can show you this. I'm trying to show you my screen or my laptop or my, what's that thing called? iPad. <laughs> my brain. So I got to heat up my milk to make it warm. It's not supposed to be hot, but it is supposed to be warm. You need four cups of flour um, and I'll tell you the rest as we go along. So let's get started. Okay. 
I also found a recipe for apple slab pie. Is that what it's called? Yeah, apple slab pie from Betty Crocker in my drawer. I was like, oh snap, I got tons of pie crust I can use up, but we do need to find some more dumpster apples. So that's what we're gonna go searching for, maybe later, but right now it's pouring out. So no diving until that stops because I'm not trying to get like deathly sick because I don't wanna be anywhere near a hospital right now. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's get started. All right, so you are going to need a large bowl. I got this one from the dumpster. I think this was from the Coat Factory dumpster. Actually, it was a whole stack of them. You are going to need all-purpose flour, which all this flour I have in this container right here came from the dumpster. So we're gonna finish this up, hopefully. I don't think it's gonna use all of it, but maybe some of it. So first you wanna get your yeast packet into a warm to touch milk and your sugar, which you need a quarter teaspoon. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. So we're gonna heat up our milk. It just says to heat it until it's warm to touch. So I put it on for a minute, but I'll probably check it after like 25 seconds, see how we are. Okay, 30 seconds, perfect. Which I just get these from, where did I get this from? I'm not sure if I got this from Aldi's or Walmart, but I can't find any now. So <laughs> thank goodness I bought some last time I went grocery shopping before all this started. Now in these yeast packets, there's always lots left. So I always open it up, see how much yeast is on that. Just rub it together. Try not to fling it everywhere like I'm doing. I keep my yeast in the fridge. Some people keep it in the freezer. Some people don't do either of those. However you feel you want to keep store your yeast, you do you. So we are going to add the half a cup of warm to touch milk in with this and a quarter teaspoon of sugar. Some sugar here, quarter teaspoon. with our milk and we're gonna let this bloom. I'm gonna just give it a little stir. It says it needs to bloom for about five minutes and then it'll start getting foamy. You want your yeast to get activated. And remember, this is my first time ever making this, so don't hold it against me. <laughs> When it starts to bubble and foam, it means the yeast is active and ready to be used. In a large bowl, we're gonna mix together our flour and salt and then create a small well in the middle and pour the milk and yeast mixture into that once this is ready. Four cups of all-purpose flour. Where did I put my one cup measure in it? I lost it. Two. Three and four. We need three quarters a tablespoon of salt. This is a one tablespoon. That looks about three quarters to me. Hopefully it is. We're gonna add that in. All right, so stir your flour and your salt together so that it's all well incorporated. I'm gonna make a well in the middle as it said. All right, we're gonna mix one egg with warm water to warm up the cold egg and add it to the flour. And then you're gonna mix it without spilling as much as you can. See how there's no foam, no bubbles, no nothing? I'm not sure why it didn't do that. I don't know if it's because my yeast was cold and I didn't let it sit out long enough. I don't know. So we're gonna pour the yeast and the warm milk into the middle well. And we're also going to add our egg and warm water mixture also to the center. Okay. And then using a wooden spoon or a spatula, start combining everything. Once combined, start using your hands and start to knead it. And then once it starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl, it's ready to rest. She says she needs for about five minutes. So we're just gonna start mixing all this in. 
And remember, this is the first time I've made this, so if you guys have any pointers or better recipes for me, let me know them. Because this was the first five-star recipe I found. So I figured, let's give it a whirl. If the dough is too sticky, add more flour, which my dough is way too sticky. So we're not gonna add a lot, we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit, see how that goes. You don't want this to be sticking to your fingers like mine is at all. Okay, so as you can see, it is no longer sticking to my hands. So, now, if this ends up becoming, if you put too much flour in it, you could also add a tablespoon of water at a time if it's too dry, and vice versa. Um, now we're gonna drizzle over the olive oil, and you need one tablespoon of olive oil, which, I got this out of the B.L. dumpster. So we're gonna give this a whirl. One tablespoon it says. We're gonna cover the bowl with a large kitchen towel and let it rise until it doubles in size. So it says it takes about two hours, sometimes less depending upon how warm your house is. We're gonna use my new dumpster soap to wash my hands. Yes we are, works perfect. And let this rise for about, I'll check it probably after about an hour and see how, how it's going. Um, while this is going, because it's gonna take so long for it to rise, I am actually going to be making some, I'm sorry about this glare, it's horrible. I'm going to be making some of my sausage, egg and cheese burritos for you guys because this is something I do that is super simple, super cheap, and super super fast to make. I freeze these in wax paper and as we want them for breakfast, I take them out in the wax paper, put them in the microwave for about a minute to a minute and a half and boom, breakfast is served. So now we're gonna get started on this. Get yourself another bowl. I just did the dishes and now I'm gonna have a sink full of dishes again. Don't you love how that happens so fast? I like when I watch other YouTubers and they have like no dirty dishes in their sink and their house is like sparkling and yeah, that's not me. <laughs> I did do some of the dishes for you guys because it was a little overwhelming, but I didn't do them all and I certainly didn't put them away as you can see right there. <laughs> that's just me. Okay, so depending upon how many of these you want to make. I have a full pound of pork sausage. I'm gonna get started on the stove. I usually find if I do about eight eggs per pound of pork sausage, that works the best for me. But again, I am really the only one that eats these. My husband will eat them, but he normally likes the bacon in his, but I didn't defrost any bacon, so he ain't getting any made. <laughs> I also have a recipe that I'll show you guys another day which is making like sausage, egg and cheese, bacon, egg and cheese bagels or English muffins and you can freeze them. And the way that I make it is I do sheet pan scrambled eggs and it is so simple, it's so easy and you can just cut them right into squares, plop them right onto your English muffin or your bagel or whatever. It's awesome. So first we're gonna get our sausage cooking. So you can do whatever you want to. You don't have to do pork sausage with this. You can do bacon, you could do Canadian bacon, you can do leftover ham if you have leftover ham in your refrigerator. I mean, you could do leftover steak if you have steak. Make a steak, egg, and cheese burrito. Any Anything, you don't even have to use meat if you don't want to use meat. This is just something that is simple and easy for me and with two kiddos, it's 
fast in the morning when I'm hungry and I want breakfast. But I don't have time to cook a whole sit down meal for myself. All right, so our sausage is almost about done. Real life going on here. My children are hungry. We're gonna make them peanut butter and jelly. And probably some fruit or chips. I'm asking them what they want to eat because right now with everything going on, I don't wanna waste food. So I'm not gonna go and just make something that they may not like or may not want and then they waste it and they don't eat it because right now with everything, we can't afford to be wasting food. You know what I'm saying? So I asked them what they wanted and they both said peanut butter and jelly. So that's what we're making. I guess I know it's no fabulous five course meal, but they're six. They like peanut butter and jelly. I'm a real model. I'm not like putting on a show for YouTube, as most of you should know by now. So, this is what my kids like, this is what they're getting. Also, my store was out of like, whenever I started going grocery shopping, it was like earlier this week, they were out of bread. The only bread they had was the Sara Lee Artisanal. Let me tell you about this bread. Oh my God. If I wasn't so poor, I would buy this all the time. <laughs> but I ain't that rich. But that's all that was left. So I was like, well, it looks like I'm paying $3 for a loaf of bread. Which we usually get that um, Wonder Italian. That bread is so good. Because hubby likes Italian bread. And I like Italian bread. I mean, the kids, I usually buy them wheat. Um because they don't really care what they get. That's literally, they had nothing on the shelf. There was like a whole box must have just came in of that Sara Lee bread. And I was like, well, that's what they're getting. And we love it so much. But the Wonder Italian is like $1.50 a loaf, but it's good enough. <laughs> when you got a tight budget, you know what I'm saying? So this is a very cheap way to do prep cooking. I do not like to prep things that are expensive. I'm not gonna, you're not gonna see me prepping steak for steak stir fry or anything like that. You're gonna see me doing breakfast items, some dinners, but mostly breakfast because who wants to make a full on breakfast in the morning when you just woke up after not getting much sleep? Not me, no thanks. So I love to prep breakfast and breakfast foods are cheap. Eggs are cheap. This pork sausage is really cheap. I get this from Aldi's for I think under $2. You can't beat this. All right, so this is cooked. So we're gonna turn that off. Ooh, also, so do you remember me telling you guys that their school, um, they don't have like an online program? Well, we just got an email and it said, <laughs> What am I looking for here? Cinnamon, here it is. Is that it? No, that's paprika, Shannon. There it is. So anyway, I just got an email and it was about a survey to um, ask us about like what we have available. Like, do we have a laptop? Do we have internet service? Do we have tablets? So I think they're trying to see how many parents in the district have the things that they need to do the online schooling, which I think it's fabulous. I am so hoping that we can do online schooling because my girls are only six. They're just starting to read. They're learning to write. They're learning, you know, a lot of things. And I'm not a teacher. I'm trying my best, but I'm not a teacher, guys. So I need them to know, you know, not to lose all the things that they've learned so far in school. I mean, we're in March here and I don't, God forbid, want them to be held back because they're not gonna know enough to go into first grade whenever that time may come. You know what I mean? All right, let me get these kids fed and then we'll start on the scrambled eggs. Got the munchkins eating over there. That's why it's so quiet. So we are going to get our eggs in the bowl, which I do about eight eggs 
her one pound of sausage. And that usually gets enough for a 10 count of flour tortillas. That usually works out to be perfect for me, but you guys do however many you think would be good for you and your family. If you're not going to want to freeze as many, then by all means, use less. For my eggs, I am just going to put in a little bit of salt. You guys put in whatever spices you like. I personally just use salt and pepper, a little bit of pepper and a splash of milk. We're gonna get our sausage out of the pan and get our eggs right in there. added in some shredded cheddar cheese. You guys can add in any kind of cheese that you like. You don't need much. This was probably about a cup, maybe less. And then I'm just going to add back in my sausage and mix it all together. And then we'll just start stuffing our tortillas and rolling them up and voila. And look at how much that made. Eight eggs and one pound of sausage. You don't need a lot to fill up your tortillas. So you can stretch this pretty far. So all I do is I go through and get about a square of wax paper. And then we're just going to start rolling these bad boys up. And then we'll put these um, in a freezer bag after they cool and pop them right in your freezer. number nine and this is number ten and I have just enough filling so it works out perfectly I mean you could definitely stretch it more you could definitely add less sausage more eggs put in the cheaper item more cheese however you want to do it and there you go breakfast burritos good to go I'm gonna get these burritos put in some ziploc bags so i just buy some storage bags gallon size storage bags from the dollar store and all you gotta do is put them in like so and they will not stick together because they are in wax paper and voila then you can put them in your freezer and that is seriously such a cheap, simple breakfast item. And that could even be a snack, that could be a lunch, that could even be a dinner. There's my children. So, fingers crossed our bread turns out. So I'll be back probably about a half an hour, 45 minutes, and we'll see how our bread is doing. It's now two o'clock, and my dough is doubled in size. Give it a few pokes, it should deflate. And that is exactly what it's doing. Perfect, so it did turn out even though my yeast didn't bubble. You can actually leave this for up to three hours, which is great for us mamas because, you know, like me, I start doing something else, walk away, and I totally forget about it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start kneading this dough again and add more flour if need be. I'm also going to put my, what are these things called, burritos <laughs> in the freezer. I'm just gonna cover my hands in flour. I kneaded it again. We're gonna cover it again with our kitchen towel and let it rise for another hour. And then when we come back, we're going to knead it one more time just to shape it. Not really knead it, but more shape it. 
and put our Dutch oven in the oven to start preheating. So it is now 4.30 and my bread has rose for another hour. So let's check it and see what this bad boy looks like. Oh yeah, that is definitely doubled in size. I put my Dutch oven in the oven to preheat. You have to set your oven to 450 degrees. Um, I did have to drop a rack down because I put the lid on. I don't know if you're supposed to put the lid on or not, but I did because I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so we're gonna form this bread. Punch it down again. You're gonna put your parchment paper, Dutch oven. Goodness, that's hot. And then you just want to kind of form your dough into like a perfect round ball and like tuck it under, kind of just like this, just so it's like a nice round ball. Plop it in there. And then we're going to take a knife and you're going to score it. just three times one in the center it's not nothing you know we're not doing this for any reason it just says it makes it look better so just score it three times pop your lid back on ow I just touched it with my arm we're gonna set it for 35 And once that beeps at 35, we're gonna remove the lid off of the Dutch oven, put it in for another 10 minutes without the lid. That way the top can get all nice and golden brown and crunchy. All right, so it's been 35 minutes. So we are gonna remove the lid and I'm gonna pull it out just so you guys can see what it looks like. Cause I kinda wanna see what it looks like. Remember to use your oven mitts. Oh my God, that looks so good. I'm so proud of myself. Let me show you guys what it looks like. Look at how perfect that looks. Now that's 35 minutes. So I'm gonna remove the lid and put it back in. I'm not gonna do 10 minutes just because it's already kind of hard. So I'm probably only gonna let it go for about, I'm gonna put it in for five and then I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like after five. Mm. It's been five minutes, well, like four and a half minutes, but I'm taking it out because I don't want it to get too burnt, like brown on the top, not burnt, but you know what I mean. But, oh my goodness, this looks so good. I definitely think using the parchment paper was a very good idea. And also it says if you don't have a Dutch oven, you can actually just make this the way that I made it in a regular bread pan. You don't have to use a Dutch oven. So here's what it looks like. How good does that look? Oh my goodness. Remove the bread from the Dutch oven, wrap it in a kitchen towel, and let it cool for at least 30 minutes before you cut into it. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh my God, that's heavy. All right, wrap it in a kitchen towel, and we're gonna let that rest for 30 minutes. So I'll come back and I will slice into it and we will all test it and see how it tastes. It smells really good and it looks pretty good. So I'm hoping it tastes as good because I don't have very much yeast. And if I just wasted a packet of yeast and this doesn't, didn't turn out good, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> so it has been about 25 minutes. The bread is nice and firm on the outside, but I'm sure it is super soft on the inside. So we're gonna cut into it and see how it is. Oh my goodness. Perfect. Super soft on the inside, but crunchy on the outside. Oh, yes. Girls, you want a taste test? Yeah. One for you. Don't drop it. And one for you. All right. What do we think, taste testers? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I got two thumbs up. Yay! 
Is it really good? Do you think it's like the best thread I've ever made? Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Oh my goodness, you got Two thumbs up. I got four thumbs up all together. All right, well, there you have it, peeps. I got four thumbs up out off this Dutch oven bread. So give it a whirl, guys, because it was a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie, um, letting it rise two times. But if it makes a really yummy, simple, I mean, simple ingredients, cheap ingredients, it's hard to find yeast right now. From what I'm hearing, a lot of people are having trouble finding it, but thank goodness I had some on hand. So if you have some on hand, you have salt, you have egg, water, milk, and flour, you can make this. So I am, I think, going to go out diving tonight because the rain is stopping. So hopefully I'll be able to get a dive in and upload that for you guys tomorrow. Hopefully we'll see how it goes. And I will see you guys in my next video. Of course, I will be talking to you all in those comments down below. And as always... Happy diving and happy baking. Bye guys.